I had a request yesterday to do a tutorial on isoplething. Isopleths are a generic name for any line connecting equal values. With uh, pressure values, those lines would be called isobars. With temperature lines, they would be called isotherms. So this is going to be just a generic tutorial that applies to any kind of value. And let me simplify this a little bit. I'm in digital atmosphere and I'm plotting data for Canada because we don't have a whole lot of pressure systems here in the U.S. this time of the year. So I'm going to go to data. Actually, no, I'm going to go to file and preferences. And in the, the preferences menu, you can set up the station plots however you want it. So for this exercise, I'm going to do just temperature because pressure is a little bit more complicated because you have, you're dealing with tens, units, and tenths. And I think that's going to lose a lot of people right from the start. Temperature is a lot more straightforward because what you see is what you get. Let's do temperature lines every 10 degrees. I'm going to keep things kind of simple here. So we're going to start with 70 degrees. Where is 70? Right here in Saskatchewan. I'm going to draw that on south, and I want to keep cool temperatures on one side of the line and warm temperatures on the other. You don't want to deviate from that because otherwise you're going to get very confused drawing out these lines. And as I go south, I go in through Billings, Montana, and in through Wyoming, and I'm kind of thinking about these stations as I go because it's very important to be tuned to the areas that you're looking at. You have to know their geography, the terrain, the vegetation. All of those are important influences on the weather patterns that we have there. So I'm going to draw this 70 degree line in between here and I want to keep it just at the right spacing between the two. All right, 70 goes on. We can't bring it between these two stations because you got 68 there at Salt Lake City and 66 at Denver. 70 doesn't belong there. It doesn't belong in between these two stations. stations. That looks like maybe Twin Falls. But it is between these two stations here so probably what's going to happen is we're going to recurve this line back northward you got to make sure you keep the cool temperatures on this side of the line so now we're going to go between boise and twin falls bring that south and that goes all the way down into nevada that looks like austin nevada not quite as big as austin texas then we're getting a little bit off the chart here, but there's a 70 degree line in between those two stations. So it looks good so far. I think we did a good job of that line, but we've got another 70 degree line that we have to draw in between here. So let me start out at the bottom. We have, I think that's uh, Grand Island, Nebraska. We go in between there, Casper and uh, Pierre. That's gonna go about right in the middle. Gotta keep the, the station spacing correct as you go. So 64 there at Minot and 72 at Pierre, we're going to want to be about right here. So we just draw our line and see that? Just perfect. 58 and 70. So where's it going to go? It's going to go right over the 70. And now between 72 and 58, you can see I made a mistake there. I don't want to draw it like that. I've got to go closer to Pierre like in here. So let me back off on that. I'm going to bring that up through South Dakota just like that. Going out further west, I don't see any more 70s. There's some up here, but I can't go between these two stations, and I can't go between that. So I've got to bring this southward somehow. we got 65 here, 66. Looks like we're going to be going back through Iowa, kind of like that. And I can't really erase this line up here, but you want to plot your temperatures at the top of your line. So I, I tried to draw 70, but it kind of looks like crap there. All right, so Ontario is going to get a line. There's 70 right there, and 77, that's warm along uh, James Bay. So our 70 line is going to go like that. I don't see any more 70s. There's one out here, but I, I can't break through this barrier right here. These are all 60s. So this is going to be a closed contour. So there's 70. Kind of hard to do this with a mouse. Okay, any more 70s? Well, we got 83 right there at Portland, Maine. So we're going to draw a line in between there, 68 and 86 in between, I think that's Rochester and New York City. And we bring that on south. And I'll label that really quick. I think the edge of the screen is about in here somewhere. 
Okay, any more 70s? Okay, these guys are all on the right side of the line. Looks good here. Now we got to do something about, about the Pacific Coast. 77 in Fort Nelson, that is warm. Okay, we bring that contour out towards the lower part of Alaska. We have 71 there at Ketchikan. We can be pretty sure it's going to be cool offshore because there's a cold current along the Alaskan coast. So we're going to go a little bit on this side of the line. Technically, when you bring a line out into a data void, you're supposed to stop drawing. But since we're really close to the coast, uh, and I know it's cool offshore, I'm going to go ahead and break that rule. So we're going to bring that south. And we can go between the 71, I think that's 70, 73, and 63. That's going to go about right here. Now we're getting into British Columbia here. We have 81 and 68. We have to have a line in between those two. So our 70 is going to go about right there. Any more 70s? Yeah, there's one here, 75. So we need to be very careful going through this part of the country. Okay, now we bring our line southwards. We have 63 there at, uh, what would that be? Uh, it's north of Seattle. It's Vancouver, Washington, maybe. Then we have 75 there. I don't know what station that is. Probably Kamloops. And bring that south. There's Portland and Pendleton. That's going to go about right here. And now we've got to go into the Oregon Desert. And down into Nevada. I see a 75 there at Fresno. So I'll put that about right there. So that's our 70 degree line. I'll label that real quick. And then we're going to have a isolated 80 right there in western Alberta. I'll draw 80. Okay. And what else do we got? We're going to need a 60 right here in northern British Columbia. So I'm going to pick a spot right here. We have 66, 52. I don't know what those stations are. That's the Canadian Shield region. Not much up there. Now we got to go back westward towards Hudson Bay. So our line is going to go west. Got to go in between this 54 there, Churchill, the polar bear capital, and 61. I don't know what station that is, but our line's going to go in between there. There's 63 and 54, and now we got to go between 60 and 54. We can't bring it through here because 60 does not go between like 63 and 68. So I'm going to bring that northward up to Yellowknife, and then I'll just end the line there and label it 60. Now, if you want to do intermediate contours like every five, that gets to be really easy. All you have to do is just, you've already got your guide set up. You know you're just going in between. So it tends to be very easy. That's why you should start with a large interval and then work down to your smaller ones. You get, you, you'll get a much better result. Here we have an isolated 58, so we're going to have an isolated 60 degree closed contour. And bring our 65 line. Okay, we're going in between 70s, so here we're making a mistake. We actually got to, we actually have to go this way. So we'll bring our 65 line up north and up north of that mystery station in Saskatchewan. And we're done. Do we have any 65s? We have just a small one probably here in Washington. And I think we're just about done. Well, we need a 55 up north. Oops. Forgot to include Churchill. There we go. There's 55. And we're getting off screen here, but I'll just draw a quick 50. And we're done with that. I'll draw 45 in Labrador. And let's see. Are we finished? I think we're just about done. We, gotta, we have to account for these very warm readings in Boise. So I'll do that really quick. There's 85. We need to draw an 80. It's going to be a closed contour, kind of like that. I can't really label this because it's going to be illegible. And then we're going to do a quick 75, and then we should be good. So 75 degree contour. It's going to go like that. We don't want to skip stations. And it looks like we're good. We need a closed 75 right there. 
So hopefully that helps you out a little bit with your isoplats, and we'll probably do a few more of these. Hopefully that wasn't too boring, but that'll give you the, the right idea. Let me throw one more contour in here for Pacific Coast. And I think we are, well, 75, 80, 85, okay. Now I think we're finished, so we'll just leave, leave it at that. Anyway, that's all for the tutorial here on isoplets, and uh, thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll do a few more of these.